now available in paperback and e-readers, Isis, Amari's Revenge. The Goddess Next Door is confronted by a new being queen out for revenge at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in this inaugural Isis series adventure. Get your copy of Isis, Amari's Revenge in paperback and e-readers at Amazon.com and online booksellers everywhere. Now available in paperback and e-readers, John Haynes' Illuminati, a man who rules the world, takes on the head of the global elite in this all-new action-packed John Haynes series adventure. Get your copy of John Haynes' Illuminati in paperback and e-readers at Amazon.com and online booksellers everywhere. One of my viewers wanted to know whether or not segregation can come back to America against black people. And the answer to that question is no, segregation cannot come back to America against black people because we have the Civil Rights Act of 1964 on the books and the Civil Rights Act of 1964 guarantees all foundational black Americans all the rights that they were supposed to have with the 13th and 14th Amendments of the United States Constitution. And no politician would want to go out and implement any sort of proposal of law to segregate black people because that would basically wind up destroying their professional reputation and that whole proposal of law would basically wind up on dead on arrival due to the Voting Rights Act of 1965 that guarantees all foundational black Americans their rights of being able to vote that were guaranteed to them under the 13th and 14th amendments and all of those black people if they heard about this proposal definitely would be going out to find whatever congressperson or senator who proposed this legislation and quickly start putting together a plan to vote that person out of office Moreover, the other person from whatever political party, they would be on an opposing position and they would be basically running against this individual, running a whole lot of ads, and as they ran all of these ads, basically this person would get an easy entry into office because they would be showing how they weren't racist and they would be the one to be able again to push back against this legislation and people would come together to push against this legislation not with rioting but by going to protest at the ballot box and again there's no way you can go out here and implement segregation against black people in this modern era because when it comes to America there are other minorities who are larger populations who would definitely want to go out here and push back against this legislation because they would see it as a group of racist and white supremacists who would be looking to try to curtail their rights next because after they come after black people then they would be coming after Hispanics, Asians, and Arabs and with Hispanics being a larger minority group they would be out here very upset because they would know they would be next. Now, the viewer further goes on to say, do, if, if segregation did come back, do you think white people would riot against blacks against the government or not? And when it, if this, the, the whole thing is, is that this whole I policy would never come into place, and it would never come into place again because America is a completely different country than it was in the 1960s, because in the 1960s, we had a country that was basically two worlds, one black and one white. But when we look at modern America, we have a world that is black and white and non-white, which includes Hispanics, Asians, and Arabs. And again, this is a the world that is becoming completely different so there's no reason for people to go out here and riot like the viewer wants to propose because they believe that if they implemented a segregation policy people would be rioting in the streets like the George Floyd riots but the George Floyd riots were a symptom of the COVID-19 pandemic not a symptom of well they were a symptom of anti-black racism but the whole thing is they were part of the COVID-19 pandemic 
and people's fears about the government looking to try to push a totalitarian policy because many of these blue party states basically had it where they were pushing so many restrictions as related to the virus that they were pushing things to the boiling point. And the death of George Floyd basically was the powder keg that set that off. And I saw that as far back as March of 2020. I remember when they started doing the COVID lockdowns, I said all it would take is the death of one black person to basically set the entire country off. And the powder keg, like I predicted, wound up exploding. And it wound up exploding because of blue party politicians who just like Gretchen Whitmer, who did not understand the the type powder keg as related to the country and sadly that politician did get reelected along with Gavin Newsom and the only one who did fall out of the favor was Andrew Cuomo but many of these politicians didn't understand the dynamite they were dealing with as related to the country but the whole thing is that the viewer is proposing that segregation can come back to America and that's not possible at all because that would optically look bad for the United States it would optically look bad for the United States like it did during World War II because during World War II, people were starting to look at America at with a side eye as it entered the war because while America was sitting there talking bad about the Nazis and the Axis powers oppressing people of a certain religion, many people in those other countries began to look at America and say that the way they were treating black people basically made them seem look like hypocrites and they were hypocrites because here you were sitting there talking about how the Germans were mistreating people of a certain religion and people of certain other um, things because they not only Nazis not only went after people who were of a certain religion they also went after people who were Polish Slavish and even people who were mentally disabled and people who were not Aryan. So America was looking like a hypocrite during the days of, of the World War II. And after World War II, people were really looking at America while it went out here touting its ideals of freedom and justice and looking at all of the injustices perpetrated against black people. And as it looked at all of the injustices perpetrated against black people, they began to realize that this whole country, again, it's not the ideal that it says it was as related to its um, ideals of freedom and justice and life and liberty for all because black people were put in a second class citizenship and as they were in the second class citizenship of segregation where in the in the Jim Crow South where everything was separate but equal black people had to deal with substandard public schools substandard roads substandard um, resources and the whole thing was we had two governments for one black and one white and black people even though they were paying equal tax dollars were not getting equal service and that's where that's where we started to see many more black people as we were dealing with injustices from the Jim Crow South and discrimination that went in the North looking to get equal rights under the Constitution. And that's why many black people went out here looking to fight for equal rights. They were looking to fight for their equal rights under the Constitution because the United States basically again promised foundational black Americans this way back in the days after the Civil War, black people were supposed to be able to have a, a, a equal citizenship in this country. They were supposed to have an equal right to vote. However, many of the racist and white supremacists who fear having to compete with foundational black Americans in the economy, what they did was go out here and participate in terror campaigns with blue party organizations like the Ku Klux Klan and use organizations like the Ku Klux Klan to terrorize black people into fostering an economic codependent relationship to prevent the interdependence of black people because if you have black people out here and they are able to build communities and functional families this shatters the narrative of the white supremacist of one his idea of superiority because this shows the humanity of a black American 
and two, it basically refute, refutes all the narratives that black people are subhuman. And they and when you see black people three going out and building a community of functional families, this shatters the smooth world that the white supremacist wants to live in regarding the image of black people and the fantasy that black people are less than human, are depraved and violent and out of control as related to black men, and black women are wild and sexually promiscuous and cannot control their own libido. When you have communities of functional, foundational black Americans who can go out and build a community of functional adults and have businesses and have their own economy, many in white supremacy, this shatters their ideas about black people. Moreover, it creates a secondary economy, and that secondary economy is the thing that many white supremacists fear. They fear that if black people go out here and show how human they are, can go out here and build our own economy, and go out here and start creating businesses that compete against theirs, they fear that black people will get the upper advantage as related to economic and eventually political power, and then use that economic and political power to, in some people's minds, punish white people for all of the years and centuries of racism they put black people through. And that's what the ideas that, that I believe the viewer has, the fears they have, oh, if black people um, have to deal with policy, they will go out here and riot. No, black people didn't go out here and riot as related to the case of George Floyd. No, as related to being ang about just being violent and out of control. No, what happened with the case of George Floyd was people saw their rights being taken away by these, by these po radical policies that were implemented in places like um, Minneapolis, and they wanted to push back against those policies, and you had opportunists like Black Lives Matter looking to get in front of the black grassroots, and the people like Black Lives Matter, they were not representative of black people. No, what you saw was, a, was people looking to stand up for their rights and turn up in the streets, because what happened to George Floyd was a crime against humanity. I mean, here is a man who basically was murdered in the street, and that's what people were upset about, and any human being would be upset about the murder of George Floyd. And I myself was upset about the whole situation, and I was upset because, again, here was a black man being murdered and having his humanity taken, and if a black person winds up with their humanity taken, it's only a matter of time before other people get their rights taken, and that's where people saw the line with the George Floyd riots, and again, people saw the line because they saw their rights being put into jeopardy, and that was the whole scariest part about the COVID-19 pandemic, was you had a lot of people and politicians who overstepped their bounds, but what's really sad is that in 2022, when people had an opportunity to punish these politicians, they did not do so because they got in their feelings about abortion. That was the whole sad part because these, under our United States Constitution, the Founding Fathers would have went out and said that these people need to be punished for all of the things that they did to people because they dehumanized people and took away their rights. And that's what people would be doing if they tried to bring back segregation. People would stand up, but they would stand up and go to the ballot box and get that politician out. And black people would be at the first in line because the tangible of our civil rights is something we would definitely go out here and fight for. The tangible of our civil rights is the foundation of our human rights in this country. And the tangible of our civil rights is something black people would fight hard against. And any politician who proposed any sort of segregation being legal on the books, this person would basically be unemployed and they would be branded a racist and a white supremacist. And that would basically be the end of them. 
And the whole thing is, is that when it comes to black people, they are a sleeping giant. And the whole thing is, this type of policy, if it were proposed, this would awaken the sleeping giant, and people would see the power of the black vote, which is currently rising right now, due to people like the late David Carroll, who started speaking against it, um, of the Blue Party, and people taking their vote for granted, and people like Professor Black Truth talking about tangibles, we are seeing the start to the awakening of the sleeping giant, and again, this is what's out here right now, and people don't understand the power of the black vote, but the black vote is gaining power, and more black people are gaining awareness of their vote, and they're understanding that they have to create, they have to pick politicians, and they have to pick politicians who make policies that benefit them, and not allow bootlicks to speak for them, this is something many black people are starting to understand, like places here in New York where we have a lot of black politicians behind dysfunctional policies like bail reform and other dysfunctional policies, and black people didn't pick those politicians. No, these bootlicks were picked by people like George Soros, and we're starting to realize that we need to be the ones who are picking the politicians to get the tangibles that we want and we're understanding our power as related to the political process. So a lot of more black people are understanding this. And again, this is another reason why segregation won't be coming back to America because foundational black Americans are understanding our power at the ballot box. And since we understand our power at the ballot box and we're starting to become aware of ourselves and aware of opportunists like these black bootlicks, and, peop and, and organizations that exploit us like Black Lives Matter, black people are starting to see how much they matter to the overall political process. Now, this was a video requested by one of my viewers, and if you want to request a video, you can send a donation of a minimum of $15 to the Cash App or the PayPal by clicking the links in the description box. And if you want to pick up some of my books on the SJS Direct imprint, like the ISIS series, the STEAM series, the John Haynes series, the books of the Spinsterella trilogy, my black sorority novel, The Thetas, or my black vampire novel, Eternal Night, or my nonfiction men's issues books, like why 70% of black women are single, you can find all of those books on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. You can also find them at other online booksellers like Google Play, Barnes & Noble, Draft to Digital, Walmart, and Target. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Coming to paperback and e-readers, Isis Dark Incubus. The goddess next door gets enthralled in a romantic entanglement with an evil incubus in this all-new Isis series adventure. Pre-order your copy of Isis Dark Incubus at Amazon.com and other online booksellers everywhere. Coming to paperback and e-readers, a steam horror in the Hamptons. The aspiring angel tries to escape a house of horrors in this all-new Esteem series adventure. Pre-order your copy of Esteem Horror in the Hamptons in digital format at Amazon.com, Google Play, draft the digital and other digital booksellers, or pick up your paperback copy on May 24th. Support Black-owned and Black-operated digital broadcast media, www.niceradionetwork.com. Nice Radio Network, broadcasting 24 hours a day, 7 days a week.